Hey, welcome to Fractal Bitcoin. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, let's get to the 10 second Bitcoin price update. Here you see the chart from 2015 to current day, and it's going up and to the right. Uh, the current price is 43,000, right around 43,000 even. We've been hanging out here, and uh, yeah, but we're clearly, we clearly bottomed out, and we're on our way for the next bull run. So for the next basically two years, it's going to be going up from here. All right, that's the that's the price update. Uh, if you think Bitcoin uses a lot of energy, just wait till you find out how much it costs to secure fiat. Yeah, so you hear a lot of people who, you know, uh, talk bad about Bitcoin. They bring this up a lot. Oh, it uses too much energy. It's not green. And the fact is, though, when you look into how much energy it uses, it uses very little energy compared to basically every single industry in the whole world. And if you compare it to what governments use to protect their fiat, what Bitcoin uses is minuscule. All right. And today, I guess the big news is that MicroStrategy has acquired an additional 14,620 Bitcoin, which they paid $615 million. And they paid an average price of 42110 per Bitcoin. So here's what this means. And for the next 18 to 24 months, you're going to see a lot of big companies and institutions buying a lot of Bitcoin. And here's what that means. The future for Bitcoin is bright and the price is going to be high. These guys would not be buying in if, this, if Bitcoin was a loser and it was going to lose money or it was in a downtrend. They wouldn't be buying in, okay? So I, I don't know. Personally, when I think about investing especially in Bitcoin, I look at what the big guys are doing. If the big guys like MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor, if they're investing in Bitcoin, I feel better investing because these guys know a lot more than me, right? I mean, I understand the basics of Bitcoin. I understand why it's freedom and liberty and everything that's, it fixes everything that's wrong with fiat. I understand it from a philosophical standpoint. But the validation I get from wh when these big guys buy in is, is, is substantial. So, all right, this is a cool clip from Jeff Booth. You were in Sears as an executive during that time. You would have seen a world that was... Sorry, I wanted to actually preface this by saying he mentions Sears and he mentions Amazon. And what he's talking about is around 2000, 1999 or 2000, or slightly after 2000, um... Amazon was up and coming, right? It was the new paradigm. And Sears was the old paradigm. It was dying. And it was a cr crossroads between two different views, two different worldviews. And so he's going to talk a little bit about that. But he also, it, it, basically what he's getting at is this idea of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the new thing. It's the future. We all know, we, we can all see that. If, and if you've done any research into Bitcoin, you can see that. And you can see fiat is the old world and that's going down. And this is, this crossroads is happening again. So now let's watch again from the beginning. If you were in Sears as an executive during that time, you would have seen a world that was collapsing. And if you were an executive in Amazon at the same time, you would have seen a world of growth and hope and it's exciting. And so those two, same world, two different frames of view. Depending which one you were in, you saw collapse or hope. That's at a company level. But what would happen at a monetary level that affected every other decision on the planet? That's what's happening at Bitcoin. Two frames of view, one hopeful, abundant, and growing fast, and then one collapsing and getting worse and worse and worse. And the people that are racing and giving more power to the one that's collapsing are, are actually making the one collapsing stronger in control over them. And the people that are just walking across the bridge um, to, to Bitcoin are making that system stronger. Um, if Sears had failed in 99, people would have really cared. When Sears failed later on in 2010 or so, nobody cared because the new transition to the new system was more complete and they were getting more value in the new system. And that's what's happening today on Bitcoin. If you were in Sears... So... That is a really cool message. I love the way he talks. He explains that very briefly. But what he says at the end is very interesting. By the time Sears failed in 2010, no one cared. But in 1999, everybody was fighting, like the people with an old mindset were fighting that Sears is still great and wonderful. And I feel that's how fiat is right now. I feel like most of the people in the world are still thinking and arguing that the U.S. dollar is the best thing ever still. 
And you have few people like me and and many, many others who are into Bitcoin saying, no, no, fiat is done. It just hasn't died yet, but it's done. And Bitcoin is the new standard. And so uh, anyway, very interesting how he framed that. Um, let me know what you think about that video in the in the comments. And here's something interesting uh, I saw on Twitter as well. Pierre Rochard said, this is the inflationist playbook. They can't accept responsibility for the consequences of their actions. So he's talking about the government and the government causing inflation by printing money endlessly, right? I just saw this morning that the, the, the United States debt is up to $33.9 trillion. First of all, how are we ever going to pay that back? We're not. And second of all, and I don't because I don't know enough about the Federal Reserve and all that, but who's lending us money? Like who who who's the lender? And who are we paying back? <laughs> I don't know. If you know the answer, let me know. Because seriously, I don't know. Maybe I should get a guest on the show to talk about that. But and he's responding to his previous tweet where he said, print money, the rent goes up, blame landlords. And this is all in response to Senator Elizabeth Warren saying something that they're going to start going after landlords for raising the rent. Hello, every single thing is getting way more expensive. These politicians are complete idiots. You know who's not a complete idiot? Saifedean Amos. He wrote The Bitcoin Standard. If you don't know, this is like one of the best books you can read, probably the best book you can read to understand Bitcoin. So if you have anyone in your life, or even you, you just want to understand Bitcoin from the ground up and really understand it, how it works and what it means, this book is great. I bought this book for my brother because he's more of a traditional guy. And, you know, instead of me explaining Bitcoin, which I have a little bit over the years, this book will do a much better job. So check that out. And by the way, the links to everything I'm talking about will be in the description. And also, uh, Blissful Sats said on Noster, just finished reading Lynn Alden's Broken Money. Highly recommend. A great book to really understand the nuances of our manipulated financial system. As essential as Jeff Booth's Price of Tomorrow. Okay, Jeff Booth, that's the guy we just listened to. Price of Tomorrow is his book. Yeah, this is Lynn Alden's book. This is supposed to be a great one, too. I haven't read it yet. And let's finish out with uh, this. Uh, Sir Sleepy is going to tell his kids this is how they made techno back in the day. <laughs> All right, that's enough. I just thought that was funny. So thank you for watching Fractal Bitcoin. Uh, I appreciate you uh, watching. And if you can support my daily videos, that's great. I'm also putting out a bunch of shorts and everything. So uh, that's it. So if you want to like and subscribe and all that, please do. And if you have uh, if you have any suggestions about topics or anything like that, I am going to start doing interviews eventually, but I'm still, you know, this is my, I think this is my fourth day of making these daily videos. So, so thank you and we'll see you soon. Bye.